morning, good morning. Let's tap in with everybody. Rock. Let's see how y'all doing this morning. We're gonna have we do some get back to some of these videos. But yeah. Good morning, kings and queens. See how y'all doing I'm on the convo. We're gonna touch a couple topics. First off with this Nipsey video, he's joking with uh, J-Rock. And then we're gonna go to Dame Dash talking business. And then that's where we end up at, man. BH, let's get it. I'm talking crib shit to you, baby. Crib, crib. Hey! <laughs> What's happening, man? How you, gonna, how you gonna shake half What's up, bro? <laughs> Yo, what's up, this Nigga, you better stay. Nigga, everybody, nigga. Everybody who hand you didn't shake, nigga. Yo, get silly, man. All right, nigga. Continue on. Small soldier. Oh, come on, small fry. You tripping, man. What's happening? I'm good, bro. My nigga rock. Got some energy right now, though. I like that. Sock somebody in the chin. Okay, no, push. Push some this shit, though. Yo, the only thing you got on me is a wrestle. From the shoulders, bro, you all uh, L's. <laughs> I'm gonna fight. I wanna fight. I don't wanna fuck what you talking about, my man. Like, big ass. That's your issue. Like, that's your issue. Like, uh, Della Reese on Hard Fight. I promise you not. Nigga, break your horn. Like, Della Reese on Hard Fight. I promise you not. Nigga, break your horn. A nigga dismantle your gun. A nigga. Uh, all that. That's what I'm gonna get mad and just go full throttle. And just get to popping on you. I ain't finna fight no big old 400 pound nigga head up. Oh, nigga, I'ma get cracking, nigga. Hey, God bless you, bro. God bless you. <laughs> All right, you got big niggas figured out, nigga. Don't Try to wrestle me, man. I got something for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. This nigga in the shadow. Yeah, cuz. <laughs> That's all the big nigga gonna try to do. You gonna sting him up, boop, pop. He gonna get mad. Arr, arr. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, man. I got a vicious sidestep for you, nigga. <laughs> you know, J Rock the army. <coughs> he was flat boxing. Cut got hot out the tag. Cut up. Cut did some army shit on me. Did a chop on my neck, bro. I couldn't breathe for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I got a hot out action jab, cut. Cause I got mad. Split this shit. I really couldn't breathe, nigga. I was hot. Cut did some type of chop on my shit, bro. I'm like, oh, real quick. I'm like, oh, cut. Shit. Like, nigga, that's illegal. You made your ass, brother. Yeah, that shit cheating. Yeah, You want to take a break on a verse? You still want to fuck with it? I'm going to do this shit right now. Fuck it. I just wanted to cut that one. I mean, I'm gonna knock this shit out right now. Cause I started, I got like all okay. the bars, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just finished this shit. Yeah, Let me do it right now, bro. John, fuck it. <laughs> Make sure them niggas around you stick to the script. Shit, real. Y'all see it? Back in this bitch like I never left Stand for some shit that you never read Passing through stages and life through the ups and the downs Like a saw just another test <laughs> Flowing this morning. Let's get to it. Yo, shout it. Shout it. One of the things that you just said that caught me though too is when you said that you got everything on videotape, Dane. That goes back to your forward thinking once again because you was blogging before Instagram, before YouTube. What was going through your mind in the 90s that made you say, you know what? Let me go ahead and just blog. First of all, I needed a witness. These niggas were saying I was doing shit I wasn't doing. Period. I was like, I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I always just have a camera on, so, and they still do it. That's why I always have a camera. Yeah. That's that, that. But number two, like, I always knew that we was making history. So it was like, of course, I'm a couple of this shit. It's logical. Like, we might not, I'm in my brain, I was always famous. Yeah. Always. So I've been Dame Dash since the day I was born. You couldn't tell me I wasn't Dame Dash. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
I knew I was like, I was always, I was, I, let me tell you, the best out parties, I had videos of that. Cody B lost them. He stole them out of my house and lost them on his birthday. I'm so mad. Yeah, I've been taping right. the whole time. All the yeah, pictures, that was all me. I just knew to document history. I just knew that these times that I was living in, I was so arrogant that I knew no one's going to have more fun than me ever. No one's ever going to be cooler than me. Run the camera. <laughs> Trust me. I'm like, run it. Cause I'm telling you, this is going to be history. So even with the battle between DMX and Jay, mm -hmm. me and Y had this conversation all the time. First of all, Big L, I had Big L had the camera. Big L was taped. That's number one, right? And Y was like, yo, don't take our part because it's not copyrighted. I'm like, but I still, I have the pool, I have the pool hall tape, niggas pulling out guns and all that. I got it. What? Trust me. It was, I got it. I take it. I take everything. If you go on Dame Dare Studios right now, you could go, it goes to Rock Files. You'll see that original when we went to Atlanta. I'm like 22. And we running around with the shirts and the jackets. I'm taping back then. Because I used to keep cameras with me back then. Because you know when somebody walk into a, a spot and they got cameras, they look famous? <laughs> so I used to just do that because it made us look famous. <laughs> so I'd be like, have our own camera. Do so we walk in and we looking like stars and shit. And that's what I used to do. Now, what about when you went to the Def Jam offices, Dame, and Rose Hell in there? First of all, I've watched that video probably about 100 times my damn self. Second of all, you did what everybody wants to do at, going, uh, at their job. What was that experience like for you when you said, okay, Choke, get that camera. I'm about to go out here and raise hell, and we got to record this. Well, again, I had not recorded it because I knew they were going to try to say I did something I didn't do. And I wanted to bust them. And the, 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 the way the, the meeting happened was so fucked up. It was because my man, Bob Alog, Biggs' brother, had got killed. So the day before that, we had the wake. And, you know, that was like really my first real person in my crew that got killed. Yeah. That shit fucked me up. I'm fucked up. Like, really fucked up. You understand what I'm saying? My whole team is fucked up. And they do this shit the day after and then try to say they send an email knowing we was all at the wake. So I was like, that's dirty. But what was even dirty about it was homie set the meeting up the whole time. I didn't even know. That's what I found out. That was what was fucked up. You know? I, in that moment, you could have never told me he set that meeting up. <laughs> Man. Giving them the business, giving the Weinsteins the business, Dame. I mean, talk to me about just the confidence and the bravado that goes along with that. Because, you know, I'm going to just be real. Most folks ain't going to do it, Dame. They just going to let it slide. They going to let it slide. Why are they lame? You're not going to let it slide on the block. So somebody step on your snake because you want to punch him in his face, but a nigga disrespect you for your money, for your kids, and your culture, you're going to let it slide. I see a lot, a, a lot of real tough niggas let it slide with some lames. And these niggas is nerds. I don't get it. That's facts. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people that when you're dealing with each other on the block, if a nigga do anything to you, niggas will shoot him, niggas will clap him. But in the industry, it's a lot of black men and women getting robbed and fucked over left and right in the business. But niggas don't say nothing and they take that L. That shit weird. Like, we ain't doing nothing illegal. Ain't nobody hitting nobody. So why is everybody afraid of these motherfuckers to even tell them about themselves? I don't get it. Because they think they the plug. They not the plug. I'm the plug. Period. That's how I look at it. If I'm not, I'm gonna. I'm not buying it. I don't want to be in the game till I am. Period. If I'm not the plug, I'm not coming through. I can't talk to a lane. I can't talk to somebody pretending to be the plug that's not, and everybody think he the plug. And he talking that shit, controlling something on me. How am I a man or a boss? I have a boss. How I'm gonna say that? If another man controlling what I'm doing, how the fuck am I gonna call myself a man? How I'm gonna call myself a boss? I gotta ask. Bosses don't ask. They're polite. They're courteous when they feel like it. You ain't never lied. You ain't never lied. So now, one of the things that I had to say about what you were just saying right there is, is it because you a hustler? Because see, this is the other thing, Dave. The reason why a lot of folks shut up is because they ain't mad enough to hustle and get it right back. So I mean, is that the confidence too that you said, all right, I'll go out here and just hustle if I got to, regardless of the outcome of these situations? Bro, I can sell anything. I mean, as long as there's a flip, I don't need a boss. And that's what I learned in the street. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I've been cracked. Everyone lost, you know, had that run where first you hit a nigga with a pack, he run off. Another nigga, he got busted. 
And then all of a sudden, you ain't got no money to re up. You got a little bit of money. You got to flip back up. You might have to put your shit in the pawn shop, but you get it right back. You just get put on a, 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 a your, your army fatigues and you hug the block. You know, that's when you grind, when you're on your grizzly. So I could always just stand outside until I get money. But it's always money to get as long as there's customers. Some, as long as somebody buys something, I'm, I'm going to have something to sell. That's you right. know? And, and in, these, in these moments, they don't have to be elite. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before, it wasn't no internet and a lot of things. Before, that's all I knew. That's what was presented to me. But once I saw other things to sell, I could sell clothes. I could sell art. I could sell movies. I could sell... Nigga, I don't need ever... And the margins are better. So I'm like, yo, this is... This is, this is like, if I can sell drugs, then I can sell anything. Exactly. But, you know, a lot of people wasn't good at selling drugs. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you were good at selling drugs, if you get in this business, you're going to go ahead. And, you know, not to, I'm not even going to say that, but look at those that were from the game that got there. Niggas be like, oh, we're going to get money forever. <laughs> Only thing that fucks it up is when you do some stupid shit. That's yeah. why I be I, that's why I be here. I don't do no stupid shit. I'm like, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling. I know I'm, I can get loose when I'm drunk. That's why I stay in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I know my trick. To the next one. So much on back to back, so we gonna watch them all very. <laughs> Minus the bullshit. Radio shouting. Rockwell Dame coming with one of the freshest fashion lines for the urban culture at that time, man. What was that like when you said, "Okay, I see what Sean John got going on. I see Fat Farm over there." Let's come with this rock of wear. What was the impact and how did you get that done? Well, what happened was, you know, we went on that iceberg and everything was wearing, was blowing up. You know, and I saw Russell getting money. Sean John was just about, they was, I went, I remember going to Puff's office or something and he had all the samples in his office. They hadn't quite come out yet. So, you know, we always had our thing. So I'm like, all right, I got to handle that anyway. But I was already making my own rock wear from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I just did it stupid. Mm-hmm. Like I went and tried to buy all the, um, <laughs> the, the the sample room and all that, and I had it in John Street, and we, you know, I just learned wrong. But anyway, so I went to uh, to Iceberg. The, the sales lady put put us because the bot the sales lady knew what was going on, so she put us with the Italian owners. I wanted to talk to them, and they were so fucking rude. They were like, I was like, yo, we went to a clothing line. Nah, I can't do that. Uh, we want to be in campaign, can't do that. Oh, we need some clothes. Oh, we're having a sample sale. Okay, fuck you, I'm not wearing this anymore. And I was going to, uh, I went to, uh, Russell had put me with these Russians, Alex and Norton, to make my jackets. And when I went in, I, I seen they had a couple of clothing lines. One was like, woo wear. And I was like, yo, bro, I'm about to do this. If y'all tell me out, we could get money. And they were like all over it. And then the hard knock life, I made samples. I just wore the hat and the clothes the whole time, you know, so people can know it was real. Alberto, I disagree with what you're saying. I mean, he a true hustler. He said, but you don't look at him as a plug. What he mean by the plug is this. You the plug, that mean that, like, for example, I look at myself like I'm the plug. Meaning that at the end of the day, all, all, if I go do a record deal, I do anything. The source of the talent and the information and shit that they need coming from me, not from them. They might got the bag, but they don't have the, they're not the source. So being the plug is saying like, he's saying that he the source. And you say he ain't teach the game until he was out. I mean, while Dane was on his run, they were 20 years old, bro. They were 21, 22 years old. And at the time they on a run, you know what I'm saying? It ain't that much time in the world to be able to teach it and be in the game because you competing. But I do understand where you coming from. So I won't, I, when I say I disagree, I don't disagree with everything, but I respect what you're saying because it's a lot of truth in what you're saying too. So I won't say you're wrong. Let me rephrase that. I, I disagree with certain parts, but it don't make you wrong. It's just our opinions. But I think Dane did a lot in teaching the game, especially especially after. So I will give you that. When I, when I listen to your statement, afterwards, after everything went wrong, he started really giving the game. You know what I mean? And I think it's a lot of secrecy in this game, too. But uh, he said he made a statement that he couldn't wear white tees twice. And, you know, that was just him being a, a clean. But Dane really did help out and really did show about uh, handling business. Like, you know, a lot of people call Dame rude, but as he was trying to explain is that these people, he would be around these guys and then when they get around uh, black people or other minorities in the business, they would take advantage of them. You know what I'm saying? And make them do stuff that they shouldn't have to do. So it was a lot of that. But, you know, when he say he the plug, he's just saying that he's the source. Like, you know, 
I ain't, I don't got a boss. I'm not working. So I'm the plug. If you need some, then you need to understand where we sit at the table. So Dame saying that he's the plug is just saying that he's the source. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm the source. I would tell niggas I'm the source. You know, you want the music? I'm the source. You want the, this? I'm the source. If you the source of power, then, you know what I'm saying? Then all things ref reflect around you. But it is other forms of power around you as well. But he's just saying as a, as a, as a mental note, as a self-esteem, he like, I'm the plug. You know what I'm saying? That's what he mean. And, you know, the rest, the, the rest was history. But, you know, to me, mm -hmm. all of the stuff that was happening was supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, you know, I've been sitting back watching. To me, I wasn't getting enough. I was, I was always disappointed on what the money was once I got there. Mm. So, you, like, you got to think, I'm looking at, I'm young, you know, even I, had, I always had bread or whatever. At 17, 18, I'm watching Run DMC and everybody getting money and ham all this. Niggas is getting money. And when they start rolling, Dre and all that, everything's rolling. Like, it's crazy. So I'm like, damn, we just sold five million record. Where the money? Where the fuck is the money? Why am I still, I don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone looking at us like we getting it. I'm like, we not really getting it. You know, we just know how to, you know what I mean? But it wasn't no real money. You know what I mean? It was like, let's say, this is going to run out. You know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. so I always felt scared. That's mm -hmm. why I was always doing new shit. I was like, yo, I'm not comfortable with three men, four men, eight men in the bank. And that's supposed to be the big lick. I'm spending that. I, I, the things I want to invest in cost more than that. So every dollar I ever made, <clears throat> like if I get five men, eight men, two men, right back to the business. Because what I'm going to do, spend it. Yeah. So it'd be like, niggas, oh, you broke, nigga? I ain't broke, nigga. I got businesses. I invested in Rachel Roy. Like, for example, I'll give you a perfect example of that. Let's say, let's say with my music, every dollar that I make off my music, I don't spend it or take it out the account. I just drop more music with it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's hard to tax something or to fuck with something that you ain't touched. You know what I'm saying? So anything you make, so if, if, in the shirt business, if whatever I profit, I take that back and put it back in the shirt business or put it in another business. Or every dollar that I make from music, I put it and I put it somewhere else in another business. You know what I mean? But you don't, when Dame's idea was genius in the aspect of every dollar made here, I mean, what, that's why he got, the, that's why they invaded his house, tax invasion. But they couldn't do nothing to him because he never spent, he never really had spent the money. He just kept reinvesting it. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said, Jerry Bean and Miss talk about the split. They both started, they both um, stated Dane was wasting money. Yeah, they felt like Dane was wasting money. They felt like Dane was wasting money, but, you know, everybody, every man that gets his own money and gets their millions, they all got their own ambitions and they all got their own will and, and their own wants and what they're into, right? Now, if people around you don't understand your mindset, then it, it can be a waste too because Dane doesn't, he never ever came across as a wasteful guy except for, you know, a lot of this is business, so you could write this shit off, some of this shit off. But with Beans and them, yes, they said it, but also remember that Beans and Bleak, when, when Rockefeller split, Dane, in the in the business, if you if you dig enough, you learn that Dane was the person who kept educating all his artists about the business. Like, he the person that taught Beans how to do state property. He told Beans, get you a label. You know what I mean? You, when you sign to us, you gonna eat, but not really. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know the game. You got to go sign you some niggas, and then you got a label, and then you run it. Just like he, like Dame had his film company. He taught Beans how to get a film company. He taught Beans how to take his situation and to make money off of his situation with his fame. So everybody in Rockefeller who knew Dame, Dame was teaching them the business. This part of the reason why Jay and them split, because Jay didn't like that Dame kept teaching. Dame, look, Jay was like, if you keep educating the artist, how the fuck we going to get rich? You know what I'm saying? And so that was the problem. If, if all the artists are educated and know their business, then it's less money at the top because with, a, with, a, with the big record labels, they keep their artists ignorant so that they can make all the money. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. It's kind of like they were black independent. But that's why I say people don't understand that Dame, it's a reason why they wanted to take Jay and didn't want Dame because Dame didn't want, Dame didn't want to be owned or he knew there was no such thing as a true partner. He just wanted ownership. Jay, on the other hand, Jay wanted money. He didn't give a fuck about ownership completely at the time. He just wanted more money and to be able to do more because, yes, Jay felt like that Dane was holding Rockefeller back, but it's all perspective because some people can feel like that about, if you in a group, for example, and one of them people really business-minded and you just thinking about getting a bag, y'all going to conflict. Dame like, nah, we don't need to, we selling liquor, we selling clothes, we sell everything everybody else sell. Plus, we sat down at the table with these niggas, and they was rude and catching attitudes, and they acting like we supposed to be happy to wear they shit. Nah, fuck them. 
right? And then we start selling liquor, and then Jay-Z, in the middle, a year into they, them niggas selling liquor, he look in a magazine and see a commercial of Jay-Z doing liquor, or doing a liquor commercial for another company, and they sell liquor, bro. You know what I'm saying? And he said, dang, um, cheated beans. Dang, they cheat beans out of shit. Because, listen, bro, did you hear state property talk in the last couple years? State property said beans cheated them. Like the first year when they went on tour, B told them it was a promo tour. You feel me? And they didn't get paid. That's why a million are mad at him right now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't never heard one artist say that Dane cheated him. You know what I'm saying? Because Dane helped, help. Because if you know the business, then you know that Dane helped Dane. I mean, Dane helped Beans start state property. You know what I'm saying? Beans was fucking up some of his money. Beans was fucking up his money. If you dig and you know, you know what I'm saying? But that's the point is that Dane was educating everybody. You know what I mean? And Jay, if if if, if me and you sell liquor, bro, and then I see you in a, and I see you six months later on a commercial for another company for Patron, I'm gonna have a problem. You know what I'm saying? So good morning. So that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that it ain't no bad because that's the thing about business. It's all it's a lot of shicey business involved in business, especially when people don't understand. And so that's why I see people walk around and respect Jay Z, but they're Jay Z, the only reason why Jay Z Jay Z walked away powerful, it's like, for example, me. If I if I started the company with three people and something happened in the future and then I decide to leave, I'm gonna take most of the company because I'm one third business owner and I'm the art. The fact that I am the product, I'm the product. So when Jay walked away from Dane, which is because Dane wanted to be able to get more Dane wanted to take bags from billion dollar corporations and he wanted to be a part of that world. They ain't wanted to be a part of the ownership world. It's two different worlds that people, my people need to understand. There's the people, there's our people that want, or there's people in Janet Jopi, there's people who want ownership. And that means they want anybody, so we're going to start our own liquor company. We'll take some help, but only the help that's genuine and nothing that's trying to take our company. And then it's them niggas who just, they want to create something and they want to hand it over to the next man who already got a billion dollars just to get a bag. And they don't lose, they lose all creative processes, all control, and they really don't own anything, right? Those are the two different roads. Now, it's your choice. You know what I'm saying? Some people like creating things from their hard work and selling it to somebody else. And that person get them a couple hundred thousand and they go make 40 million. And a billion in over 20 years. And that person, the only thing you made was that 200000 for your invention. And some people want to keep their invention and make the full revenue. And that's why I say, like, we don't, only in our community do we look at things that way. Because, you know, like I tell you, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and all of them people that we look up to as billionaires, they didn't live by the codes we live by. You know what I'm saying? He said, Dane signed a liquor deal, not Jay. Dane was cuffing and using Jay's face. Yeah, well, no, nah, you got to remember, Jay... Jay Dane and Biggs, the boxer from Jersey, they started Aradale, the liquor company, right? And Jay did an ad. I can't remember the company. He did an ad for him. But if we're, if we're, it's like, it's like we all playing basketball, and we all in the playoffs. I shouldn't see my partner on another man's team commercial. It just ain't good business. We can't be selling liquor. That's what I'm saying. It's all perspective. Like, I mean, it's it's all how you look at the business. And that's what I learned about people, that some people look at this shit from a dollar perspective. And if you look at it from, if you want to chase a dollar and you want to be capitalistic, then Jay, your type of guy. No mustache having, no masculinity. You know what I'm saying? Jay, Jay, like, I don't, I understand. In order to run, a, in order to do what Jay doing, you know what I'm saying? Jay a slaver. And anybody that tell you that he a slaver. He went over to, he went over to Live Nation and got that contract because Live Nation, the biggest um, touring country in the world. You can't tour without Live Nation. So what he did was he said, I'm a middleman because I'm popular. I'm a middleman people. And so they come to him and every artist that need to tour, he eat off. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's a good plug when you first start, but in the future, if people that be patient after you kind of be in the industry for a year or two, you can build your own connections. But that's that's not what niggas doing. So that's why I always say that about Dane. Everybody gonna have their opinions, you know what I'm saying, of the shit, but check the facts, man. This shit documented. You know, I invested in lead in those things that are going to yield later. Residual income is not what they were teaching us. So, you know, when you were an artist, unless you really get a sick catalog, like Michael Jack. I mean, he, he said, who's the smarter businessman? They both smart men. But we have to realize there is no Rockefeller without Dane. See, Dane at 16 sent himself to boarding school. 
business boarding school, meaning you don't come home. You stay at this school. It's like a prep school. And he went for business. And Jay used to laugh. I'm like, what the fuck you signing? He said, because, nigga, I wanted to know business. So Dame came back at 18, 19 and already had a, basically a degree in business. So it was Dame and, and, and Biggs. He had the money. He was a professional boxer. That was the other, like, he had money, Dane had his money from the street, Jay had his money from the street. So that, that's where it all came together. Dane Brain was the person that was shopping Jay. Jay was more of, what made Jay a third business partner was that he had money up, but he was the artist. Jay wasn't as businessman as you think he was. Like, the businessman you see today, Jay wasn't that businessman back then. He wasn't not a businessman at all, but it was Dane sitting in the meetings that was arguing with people. Not Jay, bro. Actually, there's some shit. That shit might not hold you down when you're 50, 60. So what I'm seeing right now is a lot of rappers that are older working harder now than when they were younger for little crowds. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm like, first of all, I'm not going to be jumping on those stages pouring champagne. Nobody wants to see Dane do that this age. You know, that's corny. So I was just always looking for the bigger lick. I was never comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't... I. Like, that's why then I did Rachel Roy, I started, you know, even Ryan Kenny out there. I funded Kenny Burns and Ryan shit. You know, they don't talk about that. Yeah, it's not wrong. Uh, it's not wrong at all. And I'll tell you why they ain't wrong for Jay to think that way. It's a, it was a two-way split. And I think that we're going to learn, as, as, especially as black men, when we come up together as teenagers and we grow and we doing business, a lot of shit going to change before we hit 30. Cause we, cause it's a lot of, it's like we kids, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas was teenagers, they was kids, and then the money come, and then they, they dating in relationships and all of this stuff happening, and then y'all grow separately. Cause who you are as a teenager, y'all kind of still being who y'all project to be, not really who you are naturally. And then as we grow up, a lot of people get strong enough to just be who they are, you know what I mean? So that's the breakup between businesses is almost inevitable because you know people grow differently and got outside influences when they're not around each other as they get older and they own money. Now. Jay was hurt. Dane was hurt, and Jay was. I, I can see both points. Jay's point of view was almost saying, like, look, I'm one of the biggest artists in the world. And I could go on tour by my motherfucking self, and I had to split money with Dane, Biggs, Beans, Bleak, nobody. Because I can go on tour and keep that whole bag. Because when I go on tour, I bring them with me, and then the bag trickles down. That's true. Right? That's very true. Especially if he felt like. You know what I'm saying? Certain niggas, they was getting bigger and it was certain niggas and he didn't like that that uh, Dame brought Cam in. Because that's what this shit about. He didn't like the Dame and, I mean, Jay and Cam never got along since they was kids. So he didn't like that factor. But, but you know, Dame and Cam grew up. So it, it was more like Dame and Cam was tight. And it was like, you can't sign Cam. It's like, I, you can't sign a nigga who, how do you go to a, how do an independent black label that's successful go to another independent label that got the same qualities as they got and already got a buzz in the street you can't sign him as a rapper or he gonna walk away. You gotta sign him as a business owner. He didn't sign Cam, he signed Dipset. So you had to, he still needed to be in control of his company. The only thing that they needed was somebody to help them get bigger and, and Rockefeller could help them expand. You know what I'm saying? They, they wings. That was a great business move on Dane part, but it was a bad business move because I guess he should have, if he knew Jay didn't like the nigga that bad, then it is a conflict of interest. You know what I'm saying? But Jay, on the other hand, Jay, he was just trying to get away. You know what I'm saying? Jay wanted to become his own man. He didn't want to be connected. Jay felt like that Dane was too much. You know what I'm saying? But that same too much factor is the reason. Back in the day, niggas was trying to give Jay-Z a million dollars. And Dane was like, we don't want that shit. We made a million dollars out the trunk already. Why would you offer us something that we can go get ourselves? So it was Dane arguing with niggas for years. And, and it's a difference between the black man that wants to own and create and the black man that wants to accept checks to like, for example, that's what that lady said. The difference between Master P and Diddy was P wanted ownership and Diddy just wanted invest, advance, advancements. Meaning that when P went, he I don't want, no, I don't want your check, just da 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 until they wanted, until, until the time was right. Diddy, he would take, every time he get a new project and a new artist, he would take them to the label and then he would get that advancement. That's front door. You know what I'm saying? It's all perspective. If you're the type of person that let, I put it like this, if you the, the people, depending on what you think about how you perceive business and what you think, depending on how much money is important to you and depending on how much you, how your brain works and how you relate to each person, that's why nobody's wrong, would depend on how you see the situation. I can't say Jay's wrong 
And the reason why is because, I mean, I can understand you're all these artists and he's traveling. And as you've seen, when he separated, his empire blossomed. But at the same time, it, let's not let's be real here. Did he leave and do it by himself? Or did he leave and get connected with Warren Buffett and the motherfuckers? Because once you get connected with them billionaires, I mean, we don't understand that this, this is a computer controlling sales. The billionaires are buying million copies of your shit. Five billionaires buy a million copies of your shit. Don't nobody got to buy it and you just sold. Just off your relationships and, and connections. Right? It's, it, it, this is not as uh, crazy as people would think it is. But we got to ask ourselves, when Jay left, he left Rockefeller and became the president of Def Jam. Then he called all of the niggas that was his rivals. See, I'm talking about the mentality of the nigga. Right? He, called, that nigga, he, signed, he signed X. He signed all of them niggas that used to be his rivals. And then, like X said, he never even put the damn albums out. None of them. Not just X. Some people say, well, X was fucked up. All right. But what about the other niggas? Only nigga that he dropped was Nas, really. He let Nas drop. Right, he said they said they staged for that. He said they said the stage, yeah. And I, I mean, I agree. It's like, so when he did that, what he did was he signed all of his rivals. When he became in power, he went to all of his rivals and he signed them. Right? But then he shelved them. He made sure that they, they didn't put out, none of them niggas put out no music except for, except for like Nas, because he knew that Nas had a strong enough buzz to go and put out a, take a record in the streets. And even to this day, they still beefing. They just smart. They know how to get money off they beef. You know what I'm saying? So that's all it is. They beefing, but they using a bag to run it up. So when Jay left, he went to Def Jam. He signed them, and then he left after that. So you put all your competitors in contract. And so you, he, he basically, he legally bonded them to labels where they lost control, and then he went on about his business. But then let's be real here. Niggas keep talking about Jay. Jay... Dame, since the split, has been responsible for his own success and his own will, right? And niggas laugh at Dame, but that's the mentality of our people. You know what I'm saying? But niggas like Nipsey pulled up on this nigga. Right? Because you got to understand, see, when everybody else was focused on them advancements, Dame was focused on the back door. Front door, back door. Most of the rappers I know, they'll make their whole album, spend all this money grinding all these times, and a record label come to them and say, yeah, man, I want to give you, you know, a couple hundred thousand, and da, da, da. And they be like, yeah, man. So they can run around and say, I got a record deal. But you ain't getting no you ain't getting no real money. You just heard Dame said, like, yo, they sold five million records. This is, he talking about once they had became partners with the label. He sold five million records and was still sitting there like, where the money? Where's the money? You know what I'm saying? And that's when things get funny. We sell five million records. So let's what's five, right? Times ten. Let's say ten dollars a CD. Right? Do the math in your head, right? And then divide it by three. And now you see why niggas start looking at that whole number. When you see that whole number, like shit, what the fuck I gotta split this for? But then you gotta divide it by three. That's later. First you gotta split it in half. So you're gonna take that 50 million, you're gonna cut it in half. And then the label of your partner that they partner with gonna take half. And then they get the other half. But then they still gotta take their thirds and they gotta pay royalties and they gotta kick out the artists and do all this shit. And, you know, it's a lot involved. So that's why I tell people, people respect Master P. I respect P too. But in order to get that filthy rich or rap, that means you own niggas masters. You know what I'm saying? But as they would say, as Diddy say, when black men do the same type of business that white men do, everybody get mad at them. But like Dame said, when you find out that they doing that shit, but when you find out the record label doing it to other people, oh, I mean, people don't like it, but ain't nobody got nothing to say. If you're a black record owner, he do something to a nigga, they'll kill his ass, drag him out, pistol whip him, beat his ass. But uh, uh, most of the white record execs, when they rob you, and they rob you for millions, you can't even take care of your kids. Niggas don't do nothing. Niggas just sit at home and pout about it, go on YouTube and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's that, you know what I mean? So. That's why I always press. I show Dane the most because if you about your business, I can't watch. There's nothing I could watch a Jay Z that inspires me about being a self-made black man or entrepreneur to go get bread. Now Jay can he'll make you feel like you want to go get some money, but Jay ain't giving up no game. Period. Jay the type of nigga who he move in silence. Like well, he he ain't going. He keep his mouth closed. There's no way he. Jay is in circles with Warren Buffett and them niggas. It's not possible, bro. And it's no way. And he knew that he could not mingle with that circle and be around Dane. It's, the, it's, it's that type of mindset. Like, I tell niggas that know me, yo, 
I got love for all my homeboys. But if you fuck with a certain circle of niggas, I can't fuck with you. I can't fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? And even at, and even right now, a lot of people come on like, bro, you got to take this bag. Bro, you talented as hell. You can just walk in there and give you the bag. You, I don't want the bag, bro. I don't want they bag. I, I wanted to gamble on myself. Just like how Dane felt like. If you feel like you got the talent or you created the, the, the best creation or you, you created the best clothing that you, you really feel like you got a great deal, you need to bet on yourself and gamble on yourself and take the long haul. Because if it if it acts a, if it if it just works a little bit, you you rich. And if it work if if it worked like how and you get successful like how they get successful with two type two different types of money. If a nigga got a record deal or or even a 50-50 partner and he sell five million and I sell five million, we got two different bank accounts. Because his five million, he only getting like one twentieth for that. I'm taking the chunk, except for Uncle Sam. You know what I'm saying? Basically, because you know, in business, taxes was created for businesses, not people. You know what I mean? So that's why I always had these conversations about Dame. A lot of people don't understand it. You know, Jay got a lot of, if you're looking at his success, his money success, we say, yeah, but I say, nah, nigga. Beyonce that nigga. Beyonce had more money than Jay. She still got more money than Jay. And everybody be arguing this point. It's, he said it and watched the throne. She, he, he said, she let me keep my own money if we ever did split it. That means she made him sign a prenup. Because Beyonce would lose, if they divorce without that prenup, Beyonce would lose more money by divorcing Jay. Because Jay would make money by the divorce. Because Beyonce is worth so much. Now that he's been with Beyonce, his worth went up. And he created more businesses. And together... They got a hell of a state. But if Beyonce was to kick him, if Beyonce never signed Jay, Jay would still be worth money, but he wouldn't be what you see today. He would have he would have worked a lot harder. You know what I'm saying? Because that net worth that you see in Jay, that's him and his wife's net worth together. And his wife is that nigga. You know what I'm saying? She the female Michael Jackson, basically, if you want to look at the numbers. That one, but ask him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? That's why I have some of that bounce. You know, I'm like, yo, what's up? I thought, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's my nigga. Big shout out to Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Burns and, uh, and Ryan, you know? But bottom line is, I always, I never felt comfortable, especially you got to remember, homie was quitting every day. Like every, since the first album, he quit. Every fucking album, he retired. So he always had niggas like, yo, I'm not depending on this nigga anyway. I already know what he's about to do. We always knew what he was going to do. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So I was just always prepared. Well, now you can see it in the business actions because you had so much other stuff going on outside of just the music. But the music doesn't know money. I was out. I was off the music, bro. After we sold five men, it didn't make it didn't make enough money. You understand what I'm saying? I was like, nah, I worked too hard. I argue with nigga. I feel like I'm putting my life on the line. We going to low. Yeah, it's too tough. It was like being in the street, and it wasn't enough money. It wasn't enough money. Cause I see you, y'all don't know about Jay Z telling on Master P, Dame Dash, Suge Knight, and cause they were gonna start their own distribution company, and the only reason why he was able to go over to the elites and get that bag, and they gave him that position because he told that's the that's the, that like this was said by celebrities like I forgot who it was I was I wanna say who was it was it Dick Gregory basically that he told the elites that they was trying to start their own distribution because. Never in time had black men had the money and they could afford the distribution. It was Irv Gotti, um, Dane, uh, P, and Suge. They were going to start their own distribution company, which stopped us from really making that real bread. And they said Jay told them. You know what I'm saying? The, the, we made money when we got for Rockwood. That's when that money started. What was going through your mind and what did you do when you saw that real money for the first time, Dane? I still ain't seen the real money yet. <laughs> Ooh. You can't look at me. Let me explain something to y'all too for everybody that don't understand. You know, we go online and we see niggas' net worth. It's a guess. It's a guess. Because people that got money, they it, it's like I can keep my address and where I live out the books the same way my account is very important. It's not like anybody can just go look it up. They got to make an estimate. They make an estimate off what they think he has or, or what they looking at. They might not even know businesses or even have any idea. So when you see those net worths, their their estimates, they're not even really true. It's them trying to put their estates together or trying to guess what they have. So that's what you saying. He only he listed at ten thousand. He said it now. 
And now you don't think that this is why he's dropping these jewels now to make money? I mean, but Dane, but Dane been dropping jewels for the last like sixteen years. He won't broke then. He still had, he still had money. I mean, what we gotta understand what we mean by broke. There's there's many forms of broke. If broke to us, like the, the public, is different from broke to them. And then broke to billionaires is a different type of broke. So if I had, if I was worth fifty million and now I only got two million, that's broke in their world. Feel me? But to the real broke, he's still rich. And to the billionaires having a 50 million, you still broke. You know what I'm saying? Because I see you got a lot real of money, bro. You don't ever see it? You don't see real money? If you can look at your money, you ain't got enough. You can do your own research, bro. I ain't going to go back and forth with you all morning about it. I say that because one thing I learned when we talk about Jay-Z is I learned this last year. I could tell you some dead ass shit, like all of all the fuck shit he did with the NFL. That shit he did, like niggas that respect Jay, I really I really got a low tolerance for a lot of Jay-Z fans because niggas don't want to hear the truth. So that's why I recognize at some point that if I'm talking to a Jay fan, I'm gonna exit out the conversation because niggas not logical. We just watched this coward ass nigga Jay-Z just go and sit down with the NFL and cut that deal, but he told everybody else the last couple years not to take it. And then he gonna sit in a room with his coward ass and say, do you know what the problem is? Do you know what the problem is? Oh, the problem is equality. Then he was like, but it's not football. The way, the way Jay went about it, you know what I'm saying? Jay don't give a fuck about his people, so I definitely ain't about to argue about no business. If you think Dane broke, that's, your, that's, that's on you. Think that, bro. Then be like Jay-Z and go with it that way and be like the rest of them dumbass black niggas who got these record deals who ain't doing shit that ain't benefit nothing, right? Or getting shot and killed in the street. But I just know one of them situations. Either you respect the man or you not. You know what I'm saying? You respect corporate money, that's fine. I respect independent money and niggas who make it they self. So we'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. And I ain't answering no more questions about it. He really about that act. He got he, he living that billionaire. It's real. And, and I'm so proud to like that's what I'm saying when I see like when I really see it, like what it really looked like to be a billionaire, it looked like that. He's having his version of fun with that shit. But I ain't seen nobody like I was I was I was on Never Neverland and his shit, he's doing it a little more better than Michael. What? Yeah, because you gotta think he's selling them sneakers. He sell he sell, Mike was just being this nigga really be about that action. He's selling things. Yeah. Daily. He ain't talking about no past shit. He ain't wearing it on his respect. He talking about that product that he's selling now. And everything that man put out, sell and resell for double, triple. <laughs> everything he put out, sell folk that sells like four different times. You buy it from the store, you sell it to somebody else, they're going to wear it, and then they're going to sell it to somebody else. It's art. He did it. I ain't going to lie what goes, I'm, I'm what goes through your mind, though, Dane, when you're thinking to yourself, I remember when he was a young kid coming out of Chicago I'm trying to produce, Kanye. talking about he wanted to rap, and now I'm over here on this big-ass uh, farm kicking yeah. flavor. I was right. Ooh. <laughs> said, I yeah. Was right. That's what, if, I, if this didn't happen, then I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I told everybody we going to be big. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, Why don't anybody see, why don't niggas respect Dame in the proper manner? Kanye was on Rockefeller. Jay only wanted that nigga to make beats. Dame argued with Jay for about two years and went against Jay Will and let Kanye record. They not. But what about the stories when everybody told you, bro? Everybody that went with Jay, they ain't around Jay. And it wasn't just like, let's be clear here, because we older now and we got more information. Did Dame fail or did they try to make sure he failed? That's the question I want you to answer for me, Alberto. Did he fail because he was a stupid motherfucker or because he was just arrogant or did he fail because they blackballed him and made sure or did they best to keep him out of making the money? That's what I said. We ain't never, we, no one wanted to be a millionaire. We billionaires, that billionaire mentality of go home. Feel me? But like a real big, not yeah. not the fake one, the real one. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about being a visionary though, Dane. What is it that you see that other folks just don't get, man? And where do you see the culture going now? I ain't gonna lie, this generation is off the hook. 
I'm, I like this generation. <laughs> the generation is not having it. Like, this is the first one that I've seen fight since I've been out. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's like I feel like finally I'm really glad I stuck to my guns, you know, because I know the impact it's had on these younger people. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, years ago, I like, you know, older people, they're too hard, they're stubborn, you know. It's about the younger people. That's why I started to really live on the internet more, mm-hmm. you know, talking to them on their phones mm-hmm. and their computers. So, you know, I invest in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, these people are weak, they old. You know what I'm saying? I'm old. You know, I, you know I'm strong for an old nigga, but I'm still old. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Yo, man, I got a lot to learn, man. That's one thing I say. That's why I go live every morning. I realize that my people are so misinformed. They said he was blacklisted. He wouldn't be up here right now. That's not true. Nigga, don't you understand that the internet is the reason why you can't blackball nobody no more, bro? Back in the day, there was no there, there was no internet like this. And it wasn't like... And it was internet starting in the 90s, but it was more on household. It wasn't that accessible as it is today with all these phones. So you can't blackball a nigga today because if the injury say, like, for example, I'm, I believe I got blackballed a long time ago. But they can't stop me because I got my own computer. <laughs> and I hit the corner. And then I did what I need to do for myself. You can't be... <clears throat> we live in a generation now. It's very hard to blackball. You can only blackball somebody that's lazy and want a handout. You can't blackball a nigga who's willing to go do the work yourself. The reason why they blackball artists because they feel like they cut you off from their connections and they marketing and stop putting you on them platforms and they cut you out. But him being on the interview, you can't blackball him because this interviewer could go to Dame directly. Like, man, I respect you. I want to pay you like, you know, $6,000 to do this interview. What does that have to do with anything? You can't blackball a nigga. You can't blackball today. I ain't the only person. You can look this up. Even Jay and I say, you can't blackball nobody today because they got the internet. Nigga, the internet is power. And you control your own destiny. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really be blackballed today because it's too much. It's too many avenues to get your music out to people. Where before, the only real avenue to get it to the masses was through the labels and a marketing machine. But today, you don't need it that same way. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be blackballed. See, y'all, for some reason, people think that blackball, blackball only means that they're going to cut you out from their connections. No more of the interviews, really, too much. No more, like, you know what I'm saying? So, the black, being blacklisted or blackballed is just them saying that they not fucking with you and they niggas ain't picking up your phone calls and you ain't going to be able, able to, uh, you know, your artists ain't going to have a hard time doing what they need to do. You're going to have to work hard. That's all that means. But you can't blackball niggas at day, bro. What you mean? He got a phone, right? What the fuck, you going to cut his phone off? I don't feel like doing all that, but these kids, they not having it. They, they talking that talk. I, I think... I think there's going to be a real change. And the fact that I got a network. Hey, you say, listen, they blackball all of us. And the reason, you know, I say I know I'm blackball. I got black. They probably put me on that blacklist a long time ago because of what I be talking about. Like my uncle, I sent him some music in California. He knows some, he, he knows some very big lawyers. <clears throat> and when I sent them a couple, I sent them like some music. And my uncle told my mother, like, yo, I, they, they afraid of him. You know what I'm saying? Like my voice. And then I be talking that shit. And it still got a pill on some street shit, but it got that knowledge itself. It ain't really into that, you know what I'm saying? Because they know that they can't come to me and talk. You can hear my music that you can't bullshit me, can't have step me. You damn sure ain't gonna cheat me out no money. So that's how easy it is to get blacklisted. Like the record labels, like, like Guru said, I showed y'all um, in the morning convo a couple months ago with Guru said, when rappers say I want a record deal, you basically saying, yo, please make me a slave. Please make me a slave and rape me and take all my money since I'm too lazy to go do the work for my motherfucking self. I'm going to ensure that, you know, well, the I person that controls the information. I think what you said when you snapped about your last name and what we need to be doing woke a lot of folks up, man. And folks yeah. have been sleep since then. I'm glad. And that was, that was the beginning of it. So be it. It's funny because, you know, when I did that shit, uh, I broke the fuck out. I went and lived on a farm in North Carolina for about two months. I just, just, shit didn't smell right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm out. Me and my girl left. You feel me? And then stood in North Carolina for like six months. You know? Because I know what that message, who that disturbs. Ooh. Talk about it, though, Dame. You know, basically, you're going up against the power structure. You see I'm the power structure now. Ooh. See that? No, you know, like I said, you start making billionaires, economic power is the power structure, right? You know, 
it, it, you notice the plane thing is starting to be a trend. Yeah. What, what's my rock and roll name? Billy Pablo the Third. That's from being a billionaire. <laughs> Billy. You understand? Know when I say Billy, I don't mean Billy Goat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean Billy. You feel me? Actually, I do mean Billy Goat. I'm going to be the Billy Goat. Mm-hmm. Watch. <laughs> I'm the That'll Billy Goat. That'd be slick. So now, also, Dame, I wanted to talk Don't to you. nobody else take that name. If you hear anybody say that, you know they got that right here. You know who's listening. But I'm the Billy Goat. <laughs> you know why I think a lot of people had a problem with Dame? Because Dame, since since he's been younger, since we got introduced to the world, introduced to Dame, Dame was a 19, 18-year-old nigga with the mindset of a king who knew that all the riches on this earth belonged to him. And he ain't want nothing less. You know what I'm saying? We think short of ourselves, so we tend to call our we really tend to call our gifted minds and our and our very and the people with high self esteem and self worth. We tend to call them arrogant instead of respecting them. See, if he was if he was an Italian, they wouldn't call that nigga arrogant. They would respect him. He would be honored. If he was a European, they wouldn't call him that either. He'd be respected. He was honored. If he was from France, you know what I'm saying? If he was French, he wouldn't can be considered. That. If he was from Africa, he wouldn't be considered that shit either. But in America, the fact that we became niggas in this aspect of how we think. You know what I'm saying? It's fucked up. See, it's so many great men that go right over your eyes because y'all see failure instead of seeing independence. Because cause our people think that success means that you have to, success and money is the same thing. Right? They're two different things. You want success and money. You know what I mean? But that's, that's the point. That's why I be live all the time and I talk to it. Like, I know what I'm talking about when it come down to this shit. A lot of niggas get mad with me because I keep it so abandoned. But at the end of the day, if you ain't got the mindset to try to do this shit yourself, then I'm not mad at you if you go get a record deal or do whatever you want to do. But I know deep down inside when I see you that you a half work ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? You afraid. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do the work. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you in the streets, you know what I'm saying? You can't live. That's what Dame said earlier. Dame was like, yo, if you a hustler, niggas who are successful at hustling, going to be successful at this, at, this, at this game. You know what I'm saying? But the niggas who struggle hustling... Gonna fucking struggle to do this shit. It's, it really, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's about what you understand about selling, flipping, all this shit. The same principles in the streets. You know what I'm saying? You gotta apply these same principles to this music. You know what I'm saying? It's like the street code is deeper than just what it was for the way it's being used, but it actually had a lot of principle and rooted in a lot of fundamental principles that'll make you successful in any field if you could use it for the right reasons. You know what I'm saying? So I don't get mad because some people come to me and be like, bro, you can't say that. So I, I say I don't mean no offense, but I'm not here. Or I don't care about offending niggas. I'm here to educate. If you the type of nigga that want to go get that money with the corporate structure, then don't get mad. Just keep it a hundred with yourself. You tell niggas like, look, I wanted the bag. This is why I did it. You know what I'm saying? I felt like the only way I could be the biggest nigga in the world is by being connected to these corporations. Yo, that's your choice, man. But don't sit here, and it don't be a lot of time artists, but know deep down inside that all them niggas you look up to, they wanted to be Master P. And if they ain't want to be Master P, they wanted to be Dame. Or they wanted to be Jay. At the end of the day, both of them, both of them men, they just had two different mindsets. That's all. You know what I mean? And it's all in about what you feel. I, I realize it comes down to character and choice. Outside of talking shit, it just say a type of character, man. It's a lot of niggas I know who character fucked up. Knowing if, if we sit down at a table and me and, and me and this artist got a song together and they ready to offer us three million, if I walk away from the table, that other nigga gonna be mad at me. Cause you know, we both might be fucked up, but he might be like, think I'm a fuck nigga not realizing I'm that nigga also three million nigga, then we need to put this out ourselves. And if we got a little cake, we need to really market this and travel with this. Let's do this shit ourselves. And we could definitely make the goddamn thirty million instead of that three. Cause if they offered us three, then believe they they knew that they can make about thirty. So that's what I'm saying. It's all about who wants to do the work. And it goes no matter where you from, I don't care if you're here or if you're in another state. Most niggas is sitting around, making music, sitting down, chilling. Ain't no footwork. Ain't, ain't really, I see a few niggas, but ain't too many niggas outside. Ain't too many niggas trying to do that shit, but everybody want to be like Jay and Dan. Niggas ain't nothing like them niggas. Because you got to take chances. And at the end of the day, you just got to know, like, you care less about what people think I have to do it. Because, see... Being a fan and, and looking at the business and then trying to handle the business is two different things. But not to get mad at the, you know, the fan. In today's era, the fan got to educate themselves to know what's going on 
or the average listener has to educate themselves to the business because you're going to realize once you start educating yourself, a lot of niggas you look sideways at is a lot, it's really heroes. And a lot of niggas y'all look at as heroes is really cowards. Shout it, shout it. Answer me this though, Dane. The 90s, Biggie, Tupac beef, y'all being heavy in the game at the same time. What was it like navigating the industry at that time? And when people started passing, what was going through your mind? Shit. I didn't come here for this. I got out the street to get the fuck away from this. I couldn't even understand this shit, bro. Yeah. You got to think. To me, I'm like, yo, we just beat the game. We out. We're done. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, you rob a bank and you're like, yo, let's just go to the island and hide and just chill. That's what I was feeling. I'm like, what are y'all doing? How you gonna get yourself hot after you got out the game? So that's the mentality that was passed down. That was the mentality that, that the 30 plus understood because that was the world we grew up in with our parents. You know what I'm saying? We grew so that aspect of you get out the game. Now the record labels have found a way to market. They got these little niggas marketing themselves to go back to the hood. So you're gonna make it out and go back to get yourself killed to hurt trying to be real. You know what I'm saying? The, the, being real and being brave is, a, is also a sign of idiocy or being idiotic. You know what I'm saying? If you really come from the trenches, what do you, why do you want to be there? You can help and not be there. You know what I'm saying? You can't be there. You can't be walking around like, you know what I'm saying? But it's that mentality. Back then, niggas were trying to make it out. And that's why when Damon's saying right now, he couldn't understand it. But when you're dealing with niggas, when you got... Well, when you're dealing with people in the background of all these businesses and people bringing the street into business, that was a problem. I, I, you know, I hated it, bro. I hated it. I never understood it. And, and I thought that, again, it was a program because it was when things are publicized, that's what keeps things going. Those are the triggers, embarrassing people. And I just think the public's responsibility is to ignore this stupid shit. But nobody ignores the dumb shit, you know? I know what to ignore. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I know, like, there's a lot of this shit that I could put up there that I got. Like, remember, I got footage of this, I got footage of everything. But I'm not trying to trigger certain things. Yeah. The world don't need it. I'm not going to do it for my own personal. Mm -hmm. Only time I really do that shit is to protect myself. But if I think something's going to have a negative impact on the world, I'm not going to profit from that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to have the consciousness of. That's why, like, when people be promoting gossip and stupid shit, I'm like, yo, first of all, to put out that much negative vibration, do you know how much negative vibration you're going to get back? Yeah. Are you doing that to talk about somebody else's business on a fucking mic that affects a million people and you wonder why you need therapy? <laughs> like, yo, it hurts my heart. It gives me anxiety to hear about anybody's business but my own. I don't want to hear all that. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. You understand know what I'm saying? But some people be like, yo, I want to hear all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, I don't get that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to hear another man talk about another man or girl. Because then I don't respect that man. Because men to me don't do that. So you heard about such and such? And that's like you know that person and that's like your homie. That shouldn't be talked about. But like if you know him and I understand that, it's definitely entertaining to hear, see your friends and people you know do stupid shit and you talk about that. But if it ain't got nothing to do with you, uh, you know, like, did you hear about the way he wiped his ass? I don't want to talk about, 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 about uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to hear that. Dame, from being the child to being a mogul, what was that <laughs> that you felt like you made it and that you had control of the game, man? I don't feel it yet. What? Why not then? Because I'm trying to, I, I just have a bigger play. Like, my war is a little different. I won some battles, but yeah. I ultimately haven't won my war yet. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you can lose a battle, but as long as you win the war, that's all that counts. So that's why when people are, you've been through so much, that was a battle, bro. They ain't wars. The war is, you know, I'm going to, as long as I have the war, I'm looking at that war. Yeah. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You know, like, again, until I'm looking at that billion, I ain't did it. And one of my students already did it. So he becomes the teacher. What kind of game are you right getting from Kanye now then, Dane? Huh? What kind of game are you getting from Kanye now that he done became a teacher here? Focus. Focus. That's what I learned. 
I could dig it. Focus. But, but, but see, ho, ho, ho. Kanye, Kanye got to that billion very, very. Yeah, I, maybe I'm different. Trump shit, slavery, even though what he said about slavery being a choice is kind of true. We're not going there, though. Um, he made a lot of wild statements, so he he kind of pledged himself to the other side. Uh, he went to Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, and him and Kim Kardashian are basically like, yeah, you're so wealthy, why don't you just give us like a hundred million for some clothing and shit? And made and went public. And I think Mark Zuckerberg ended up giving him something. So it he got to his billion. But look at how he got to it. So if that's what I feel like if getting to your billion more important to get into the billion the right way, because it ain't a lot of niggas who got to the billion the right way or even get to their millions the right way because I guess nobody want to play fair no more when they feel like they can take cheat codes regardless if it, if it costs them their sexuality, if it costs them they whatever, they worth, they faith, whatever it is. But that's that's the choice that for each individual at the end of the day to make for themselves. But the character is what I be talking about. I deal with niggas' character. I ain't going to knock you, but I'm always going to look at people's uh character you know what i'm saying kanye character um i don't know coming from where we come from we look at shit differently if we grew if kanye lived with us right now and a girl on the block that everybody was fucking that was pretty you know what i'm saying he ended up marrying her would you respect that nigga or would you look at him like what the fuck bro you was rolling with us when we was talking about her and shit and then you marry her but what was the motives behind it that's all i'm saying it was a reason. Right? Now, the Kardashians are connected to money. Well, or at least they had, when they was losing money, they still know how to go about and make their own wealth. But for a man that come from our communities and that goes to marry somebody who has wild sex with different people and doing all of this shit, that's crazy. It's your choice. It's a lot of things that Ye chose. That's his life and his wildness. But at the same time, look at all of the wild, negative shit he has said. You know what I'm saying? He said, I don't see anything wrong with what he doing or saying white people. But he ain't white, though. That's my only thing. Like, like I don't, I don't, I don't line myself up with saying, like, you know. Like, okay, I'll give you an example. With the record labels. The record labels been robbing niggas and fucking them over for the last hundred years. Right? But as a business owner, as being from the culture, you know, like like Puff and Jay and Jay them and say, they said it publicly. Why everybody so mad at me when my contracts is the same as the 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 white man's? Or you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like because you should you should have a different moral of the game to get your money. You should you we are we have our own we should know how to create contracts because we created the contract. And make them to where they can benefit us and also benefit the artists. But as long as the artist's willing to do a lot of work, they can edit. But the artist, it depends on how much work the artist wants to do. You can make a fair contract. You know what I'm saying? So that's all when when that's why I say it's not what, what he chooses to marry or what you write about that. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and like you said, that's most I, mean, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Is it just like when they talk about uh, fat girls and still and still fuck and wife? What do you mean? I think it's a typo. Oh, yeah, you said, yeah, 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 you said, and they still fuck him and wife him. I mean, it's a lot of people, I mean, it's a lot of people, just like when it comes down to sexuality, it's a lot of men that like big girls. But when they're younger and when they're around their homeboys and their homeboys pick on big girls, they just laugh, ha, ha, whatever, but they really deep down inside. That's what I mean But when we're younger, we're influenced by each other. But when they get older, they end up going with them, you know what I'm saying? And they end up being with what they like, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of men that really genuinely, but when they with their boys or vice versa, a lot of women that like it, but when they with their girls, they're going to laugh and joke. And then later on, you find out, oh, so you like this the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, with me, it's like, I don't, what's the point? I feel like we never, only after slavery did we, like, kind of use that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, shit, everybody else do it. Well, I don't feel like we should be lining ourselves up with everybody else because everybody else couldn't do what we did. And everybody, even in our work conditions, uh, everybody still can't do it. But I do get your point, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I went a little deeper than what you meant. Because I, I definitely, 
I know. You know what I'm saying? I get with your point as I'm thinking about it, what you're saying. So you write about he does. Your point was mainly that he has a choice, you know, and people do it all the time. Nobody's being genuine. But that's the point of the conversation. And that's why I'm bringing it to the forefront. I can't make anybody do anything or I'm not trying to make anybody make a choice. But you have a choice to hold yourself to a certain quality or a certain standard. That's self-work. You know what I'm saying? Depending on, put it like this. Dealing with artists, I can tell how much they, I can tell their self-worth of what they feel about themselves through their art. Do how they go about it. Not just in the words, like in the words for some, yes, but how they go about it. The level of quality, what they looking for, what they want, the, what they choose, right? Is it see you have more when when it's time to get money, all that shit go out the window, right? And that shit, that shit, it do go out the window. But it's not just because, it's not just because people don't have morals, but it's like, let's talk about the pressures beside it. You know what I'm saying? If you're a man, you got a record deal right now, let's say you about 25, you fucked up, you in the streets. You know what I'm saying? You got a kid or whatever. You got a girl, she paying bills, whatever. And you really don't feel like a man. And they offer you this 250000 You know what I'm saying? This 360 deal. And you looking like, shit, even though I know that I'm only going to see about probably like after everything, after the manager, everybody get their cut, I might only see like fifty to 60000 maybe. You know what I'm saying? That shit better than nothing. So they're, they're worried about, the artists at the table, they're worried about going home feeling like a failure. They girl, like, get the fuck out, you should have took that deal, or they mom saying they stupid, or people laughing at them because it took them a little longer to get it established. Nobody fucking with them. It's not just their intelligence. It's their pride in not wanting to go home and feel like a failure because other people expectation of them so that other people could look at them as success. So that's that's the true thing. I can dig it. You know, don't don't sometimes you know, I'm not saying everything he's doing is right, but what I'm saying, the way when he focuses on a product, mm -hmm. that product ain't coming out until it's right. <laughs> that. And he ain't just putting his name on nothing. Like it's really scientifically like before I really was able to watch how he works. I didn't know that he really is every single second of the day working. Every second of the day. Like y'all niggas ain't ready for that, bro. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna work that hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> I gotta take some time to the pool. And then Kanye, what he did recently, like you know, Kanye always came from like a a soul church background, right? But that Jesus Walk shit went out the window after the album. And then after he made all the disrespectful statements, see, this all strategic moves for the public. With, if the black community get mad at you, what is the... If the black community don't fuck with you no more and mad at you, what is the only way to go back to them and, and get to them? The black community got a weakness in America. Because even if you do the most foul shit in the name of Jesus, niggas going to fuck with you. But ain't nobody going to talk about that, though. But he doesn't, I'm telling you, if, for someone that already got this much money, make these many records, I be telling artists around me, like, yo, you're not, this thing is already a legend, and he out hustles you by 3,000 billion. And that's your competition, and I'm telling you, I'm looking at it, you ain't, you ain't ready for him. You ain't ready for me. And unless you're ready for us, then you, you playing. So, yeah, you know what? And what you saying, okay, you were saying about Kim. You said, you said, you said that bitch Kim is stronger than a lot of bitches, right? And, and, and you said she made a sex tape that became relevant and rich, and she got rich off of, off of having sex, basically. Meanwhile, women be out here fucking for free. <coughs> That's true. But remember, like I, I used to tell my mother this. So let's say, let's say a mom telling her daughter that, right? Even though she's the mom, what mom might mean is that look, at least she was smart enough to get her money off of it and to pull herself so that she could do better and take care of hers, right? Because it's her body and it's her choice, right? And but then when you say like, imagine if a little girl here is like, you know, you know, what I'm saying she made she doing better, even though all of the stuff she did was morally fucked up. That she she still made more money off her body, than you know what I'm saying. So that to the little to let's say to a, a thousand little girls in this conversation, you know it's a good one fourth of them little girls who gonna say you know what you are right, and then they whole moral code will follow that, and that's why that's what I mean. Like not saying you, but you know let's say they had a big panels on BET and that point get made. You know I I live and I and I'm a witness of seeing what that type of 
them words that might not be meant completely that because you're talking about how she made something out of nothing, how it affects the younger girls and why, you know, we just in the last 20 years, basically we birthed a generation of strippers. Because when we was growing up, the stripper was a stripper. The men loved them at nighttime, but it was almost like shameful. Not saying that it should be shameful. Not talking shit about the strippers. I'm just saying that's, that's the time. When we, when I was a little kid, you know, some people would kind of shame the strippers. Now, we live in a time when the strippers accept it, which is whatever. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. But the moral, the whole moral complex that has flipped in the matrix that we live in today. You know what I'm saying? And this is nothing against the strippers. That's how they get their money. But at the end of the day, you know, either we're going to deal with a reality and the truth or we're going to deal with where about hurting people's feelings. So I, I do understand your point, you know what I'm saying? But strength comes from, like, you know, she made her money and she used her body, but that was something that nature gave her that she used to get her millions, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like she created nothing. She, Kim has offered the world shit, you know what I'm saying? But she got her money, you know what I'm saying? And... You know, you got porn, you know, a lot of people do the shit. They make it seem like tapes get leaked and shit like that. It's sexuality. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the moral of this shit wrong. Like, like as a man, see, and I would say I can't argue with you because you got your point, but as a man, a man with that that as a man in this culture from my community who still hold on to the principles of what as men, most of the real men, we want a woman that see men, I'm gonna keep it a band. As a man, we, we don't want a woman when we go to the altar, we don't want to go to the altar and find out that she fucked all these different niggas. You know what I'm saying? Even the niggas that's out here fucking everything moving. They want, you know, because the woman is seen as as pure. You know what I'm saying? As as the symbology, which could be unfair. But in reality, you know, a man doesn't want a woman like, you know, you got all these sex tapes. What makes you my wife is that that is privacy. I know that you had a life before me. You might have had sex before me, but those should have been with partners. And you know what I'm saying? We all did our one night stands and did certain shit, but it should, we all should have had some type of more complex, just like a woman. You don't want to have a husband and then you find out, you know, or you, you don't want to marry somebody, bring somebody home. That's that your kids can grow up and see them on the tape doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's part of privacy. That's part of it. It's part of it being your wife. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that the women lost today. A lot of the young girls today, I'm disgusted with because it'd be like, you know, at the end of the day, don't no king want a queen that has been used and abused and worn out. You know what I'm saying? You, and it's like, and what has happened is that a lot of girls in the last 15 years have adapted the mindset of like, shit, I'm going to be like a nigga. That's the worst shit ever. Because that's what destroyed the black man. And now black women are doing that shit. And it destroying them. This whole, this whole young generation, nigga just fucking. That's all they just fucking to be fucking now. And that's all they doing. Everybody just fucking. You know what I'm saying? And then in the streets, what, what irritated me in the streets is that all the niggas with the money fucking the same girls, the same strippers, the same bad chicks. You know what I'm saying? So once disease get in, everybody get, I'm, I'm good. You feel me? And we live in a time where disease and shit is being spread so crazy that it's because of the recklessness. You know, sex isn't bad and it isn't a sin, but... Anything overly used is a is, is is a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Because now the mind only... Once you overly use your sexual organs in that way, for my queens, then the only thing that your brain is going to function off of is that lower part of your body. So your whole existence is going to exist around it. Men too. You know what I'm saying? So, he said, if he keeps it real, no one will really um, be... He said, he, said, he said, let's keep it real. No one will be really going to hate if you're living good. And if... And if you get back history, most men status at hoes, even as kings. Well, you know, they said they had concubines or as, but, but them women wasn't technically allowed to be with other, they wasn't allowed to be with other men. You know what I'm saying? And we can't, and we, okay, when we talk history, we can't use the historical mindset of our past ancestors with the, with the context of today, with the, with the, with the mindsets, I mean, because it's like the way that the world was and how they seen the world was completely different on our views and our more how we seen the world. So like the kings, they had multiple, they had multiple wives, but he had his main wife, and then he had concubines. These concubines, or what we call concubines, they were his wives. You all good, but not they were his wives. You know what I'm saying? And then in Spain, when the Moors were selling European women, you know what I'm saying? It was like the it was like a prostitution ring. You know what I'm saying? Those wasn't. It wasn't the king's like women. They was like it was like money. They were booty. That's why you. That's what I'm saying. Like when the pirates captured people, they called it booty. You know what I'm saying. So that's what they were using. It was like they had took over that land, so they were selling the women to other, you know, other visitors and stuff like that. Or, or like it's like what we call like prostitution, which was going on before. 
but but it was documented in how the Moors was doing it in, in Europe. You know what I'm saying? It's just the mindset. Like, the women didn't think like how they thought today. You know what I'm saying? The 17, you know, let's say the, the women in the in, in the 1400s had no, didn't think like the women in the 1900s or the 2000s. The women in the 1900s didn't think, don't think anything like the women in the 2000s. The women in the 1800s don't think the same either. It's, it's like, it's a lot of things going on right now in the world that that's what's messed up. It's just sad to see that I feel like that people don't realize like, you're not, you definitely not wrong about it because I've heard a lot of women in my life growing up as a kid, people close to me, you know what I'm saying? Say the same shit was at least, at least that bitch smart enough to get money off her pussy and get rich. If you're going to be a hoe, be a good hoe. Maya Angelou was a prostitute. You feel me? And, and, and I was disappointed as a grown man when I found out that Maya Angelou was a prostitute. Not because I'm judging her, but because in school they showed us all of this shit, but they clearly did not be clear with us. They, I mean, they wasn't very clear. You know what I'm saying? So what she did and what she came from make her story honorable and make you love her. But at the same time, it was like, why didn't you tell us that Maya Angelou was a prostitute? You said, I, you said, I get it. I'm just saying hoes have been around forever, right? And women are just um, monetizing what they have been given because men will pay for it. Very true. But see, that's true. I won't knock you, but I would always say as a woman, your covenant with nature is different than a man's covenant with nature, right? So it's certain things that a man can do that really violates his whole aura as a man that's, that he has to answer for. Or it's certain things like, for example, with a woman, your covenant, that's your, that's, that's, that's your, that's what bring life to this planet. And that's your connection to the universe. And that's your contract with nature to bring souls to this planet. And that is, you know, that is the pyramid. That's your entry point. You know what I'm saying? That is the place that's it's heaven. You know what I'm saying? So when it got to the point where, where women started selling heaven, it, it's like a drug. You know what I'm saying? Now, men willing to pay for it is the, also the problem. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand there's so much power in, in that. That, you know what I'm saying, especially women of color, when you selling it, of course, you know what I'm saying, you have the highest pheromones on the planet other than the black widow spider. You know what I'm saying? So, you're right, and, and, and it's very true, they've been around forever. You know what I'm saying? And, and no matter where you go in history, you're going to find some gays, and you're going to find some hoes. You know what I'm saying? It's just reality. So that's why we have to, we do have to realize that some of this shit is, is, is like I say, in the religious books, you know what I'm saying, nothing new under the sun. But monetizing it, my only thing is, not about, you know, whatever, but morally, because I always speak about morally and what's going to help, is that we could monetize off of it, you know what I'm saying, but it was never to be monetized, you know what I'm saying? I monetize music. What, what, what nature gave me, it, I monetize my brain and my information, but I'm not monetizing my, my penis. You know what I'm saying? Or my, or my ovaries and my eggs, you know what I'm saying? Or my testicles. You know what I'm saying? If I go cut a testicle off, if I go cut, my, if let's say right now, I go sell, like for a man that's like going to a place and jerking off and giving up your sperm for 10 years. Yo, that's some foul shit because now you're responsible for a whole bunch of uh, unfathered kids. You know what I'm saying? And even though a lot of them will go to families and shit. You know what I mean? And some of this shit get frozen, but you being very irresponsible with your genetics. See, our people so quick to grab that dollar that your genetics is the real money. Why you think they got blood donation centers? They give you what you don't know, that same blood they take from you and give you that $175 for, they get $1,000 a pint of that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you all, you gonna find them everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Her work wouldn't have been respected. Uh, so now, what you mean? You talking about... um. Explain what you mean when you say her work wouldn't have been respected. Um, when you talk about Maya Angelou, right? Because, I mean, I'm not judging. I'm saying that's an amazing thing because we all, circumstance in life, we all got some shit. You know what I'm saying? But she's saying, still I rise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and still I rise. You know what I'm saying? But then we got to ask ourselves, and then you got to look at it from, see, nobody really, really be real, real with themselves. Because I be real with myself 100. Like, okay, so what age did Maya Angelou decide to stop doing what she was doing? Did she wait till she was an old woman when there wasn't no more worth in between her legs? Or did she stop not being funny? Or did she stop when she was young because she had, you know, these are the questions that should be taught to when we talking to our daughters. We got to be real with them because, you know, 
I know we have a conversation amongst grown ups, but there's there might be a little kid in the back room somewhere, or it might be this little girl sitting on the side, and when they hear this, this is affecting them. That's why I try to tell women. You know that when when I, if it's a million girls of any nationality and they watch TV in America and they all watch a show about strippers and about prostitutes, there's a good section. There's out of a million, there's like one one thousandth, which is probably like a hundred thousand girls that that day at two say, "I'm gonna be a stripper." I'm going to be a prostitute. Just like little boy made a choice. I'm going to be a rapper and I'm going to be a drug dealer. I'm going to be a gangbanger. We started putting, we started putting real nigga code on that foul shit. 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 Get it how you live, sis. Yo, that, there, and, and respectfully, because that's how you feed, do your thing. But, I'm always going to keep it a band, though, because in order to change shit, we got to be right, man. We, you know, you only live once. Says who? Feel me? Who can prove it? But if we if we tell our, if we start saying that shit around our kids, you only live once, what does, what does we only live once do to the mind? It makes us feel like we need to do it all while we're here instead of being cautious of the steps we take in to live the prosperous life. You know what I'm saying? It's the mindset. You know what I'm saying? And then it got so bad now that it's like, before, it was years back in the day, hood shit was hood shit. So when somebody told them, like, you know that shit you're doing wrong, they'd be like, yeah, man, I know it's wrong. But, you know, this is what I do. This is how I get my ends and I'm getting out. But now it's like, yo, you can't talk about that person. You can't say that. You know what I'm saying? People got to live. And it's like, we started making excuses. That's why the black community is, is just, it's a, it's a shame. You know what I'm saying? Like, the poverty sides have accepted so much. And the, new, and the parents today, they the ones making all the excuses. Our mothers had their issues, but they ain't make all these fucking excuses. You know what I'm saying? Our parents did a, most of them did a, a hard job. They, black women of the generation before us, they were so hard on their daughters, they lost their relationships trying to stop them from being in the goddamn street. Because there's a lot of people that grew up right now that's grown who still mad at their mama about shit that they did when they was goddamn eight and nine. Like you had a logical mindset to know what the fuck you was doing. And now you 30, 27 with kids and you see the shit, but you still ain't gonna apologize to your mother. Or vice versa, boys to their father. It's that type of shit. So for the most part, um, women need to be honest that in one way or another has so pussy. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. And, and all men have paid for it, whether they realize it or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you took her on a date, you took her to the movies, you paid for it, nigga. But where the problem come up in relationships is that Men are running from the family situation because men know why growing up in the household with their moms and they what they saw is that, oh man, these women want money. They they just see us as a check, a check, a check, a check, a check, a check. So that even if that woman might not be that way, that's what they know. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of men run from responsibility because they like, man, this shit hard. Then I gotta sit there and listen. A lot of men ain't ready for that. A, a, a lot, of, especially men ain't ready to be told what to do by somebody. And a lot of times women tell men what to do and, and women don't even know what the hell they want for themselves. Or men be telling women what to do and he don't even know what the fuck he want for himself, vice versa. You know what I'm saying? But it's true. So that's why I appreciate, uh, Clear, your input because you didn't say anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even knocking what you're saying because everything you said has valid point and fact. I'm just attacking the moral of it. You know what I'm saying? And that's it, you know what I'm saying? I think that all of my queens appreciate the moral of it because, you know, we grown, we know we're going to make choices. We know there's certain shit that people do. I just try, in my life, and I'm speaking for myself, I made sure that the choices I made, they, they never conflicted with my integrity, though. You know what I'm saying? Not like my personal integrity. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some things on earth that's a crime that's not an earth when we leave here. Ain't no creator asking no niggas about child support. Because child support does not exist. And hell, niggas will be up there crying like, man, I know I should have paid my child support. And the creator going to be looking around like, what the fuck wrong with you? What the fuck is child support? Because that's why I say that we got to pay attention to the animals, man. That if you look at all the animals, a lot of animals raise their babies. But after a certain age, their kids gone, young. They got to figure it out, man. Once the babies in nature start making their own choices, you know what I'm saying? Well, one, they get killed and get ate or get hurt from a bad choice because that's where that only the strong survive. So people, so many people mad at Darwin, but without this policing and American system, only the strong will survive because only the strong niggas who got groups and, and all the killers would take over America. 
You know what I'm saying? They would take over. If it wasn't nobody to stop it, all the killers and the people willing to do the crazy shit would just take over large pieces of land and, and, and just enslave niggas and get wealthy. Basically what was happening when, during the colonial periods. But it's just the moral base. That's why I try to talk to everybody. It says, um, it's in fact, it's programming. She said she was probably still a powerhouse when she found the light. She hit the reset button. True. You know what I'm saying? I just know that most of the Maya Angelou speeches, she was an old woman. Feel me? At that point, her goddamn wood was in between her leg. Her pyramid had already disintegrated. So yes, no, you're not bound to what you used to do and you can't rise from it, right? But some people, I don't know her whole story, so I don't want to be, 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 be all out of pocket because for all I know, she could have been like forced into that shit. You know what I'm saying? For all I know, you know what I'm saying? It won't no other way. Like she was running from something or, you know, I, I don't know her whole story, so I'm not going to sit here like, you know, I'll be, let me dig. But either way, she doesn't deserve to be disrespected. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not speaking from a disrespectful standpoint. I'm speaking from a moral standpoint. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying those are questions we got to ask ourselves. If somebody turned 50, and, and not saying her, but if somebody turned 50 and start changing their ways, I mean, you did what the fuck you wanted to do for 50 years. You 50 now, you know your days, and yet you know time is slowing down now, you know? So now you want to repent. That's that, that's that Christian mentality. You know what I'm saying? Where it's supposed to be, you supposed to, that's what Christianity did to our people. You're supposed to be living, you're supposed to be living the best you every day. So if you not, if for, if for 50 years of your life, you living um, against yourself and in the last 20 before you die, it don't work like that. And that's what the Egyptians was trying to show you on the walls and on ancient cultures. You had to be the best you every day. Now, yes, we're going to make mistakes. But that's just like the nigga that assassinated Malcolm on his deathbed. He just repent. He going to heaven. Come on, man. We got to think more logical than that. The only reason why Christianity took over the way it was, it was the only religion on the planet when it was created that allowed you to be forgiven for your sins. All the rest of the religions before Christianity did not allow you to be forgiven. So y'all, that's why y'all got to dig. You know what I'm saying? But I do understand because it has been here since the beginning of time. But morally, that's the problem. That's, and I'm just speaking on it from, you like, that's why men get niggas' daughters and can't appreciate them because it's like, we, a man that wants, really wants a woman, we don't want them to have any type of increments of acceptance. Now, some men, some men do like it. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So it's always, it's different type of people out there. You know what I mean? But it's just bad morally. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't, we can't raise a generation of women off of that, off of logic of saying like, well, shit, at least you're going to get the bag. Because if that was your daughter out there on the videos, on porno flicks and shit, and every time you see your friends, they come to you, the men you meet, they see your daughter, the first thing they're going to think about is getting some head. Because they seen it on the fucking videotape. You know what I'm saying? And she, you know, yeah, they were celebrities, Ray J, Reggie Bush, and all these different shits, but it's like privacy, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, like, you want you want your queen or your king to have discreet. Yes, they had did things, but you want some discreetness. I mean, well, I don't know what other niggas want. You know what I'm saying? But for me, you know what I'm saying? I I don't want a princess. You know what I'm saying? I want a queen. You know what I'm saying? BH. 